What's going on? Today we are talking all things Lake of the Woods. We've got tips, tricks, and locations that can help you have a successful trip up north. It will be an action-packed video full of information, so stick around. Should be a good one. Whoa, there he finally bit. Bit it. Yep. Yep. There he is. Like that. He up bit. Not bite. There he is. Welcome back to the channel. If we haven't met yet, my name is TJ Erickson. Today's video is part three of a three-part series documenting my trip up to my home waters of Lake of the Woods. In part one, we talked all about finding the spot on the spot. Part two, we talked about my top five walleye presentations. In this video, part three, which is actually the second part of day one because we had so much footage that we couldn't fit it into one video. So I decided to make this video where I break down the lake and talk about the different areas that you can fish, some of the typical patterns that I find, as well as some other tips and tricks that you can use to make your trip up to Lake of the Woods more successful. Whoa, there he finally bit. Jeez, that guy was just hanging around just hanging around and then finally came up and bit he's kind of watching and once he bit boy did he bite another good fish on see if you can see it there in the light that leech flutter spoon you know on lake of the woods it's been so often that you're catching decent fish um, decent action but they're all 10 to 12 inches even smaller and a lot of saugers um, but when you get get around some of these reefs man it can get a lot of quality fish but it can also be very tough at times so there we go Got another nice fish there. Man, that one just came and smoked it once it decided to bite. The fish have been going pretty good. Actually, I'm catching one right now. Another good one. Oh, another nice fish, and we have enough for a fish fry, so this one is going back. Oh yeah, he might come back. Hope he already bit. There he is. That did not take long. You can see I'm still kind of hanging out down there. I must not have stung him too bad that first time. It has been just quality fish. We're catching a few of those smaller ones that are pretty typical for Lake of the Woods. This guy was not want to let go. He has just chomped down. You can see he's got that little tungsten jig in his mouth and he is just chomped. He is not letting that thing go. One more quick look before we send it down. Another nice fish. A lot of these have been in that kind of 15 to 17 inch range, just quality eaters. All right, so I'm gonna start with a quick overview of Lake of the Woods. I like to break Lake of the Woods down into kind of four main areas. You have your west side, which includes War Road, Spring Steel, Swift Ditch, and the south tip of Buffalo, just to name a few. There's usually a plowed road out of Spring Steel and Swift Ditch, and War Road is kind of one of the main trailheads for a lot of the snowmobile trails, but that one doesn't have a plowed trail. When you move over east to kind of what I call the central area of the lake, you have Rocky Point and Long Point. It's kind of the two main areas on this little bit of a peninsula. Out of the Rocky Point area, there are trails for track vehicles out of Arneson's and out of Dales, but there aren't any plowed roads anymore. Out of the Long Point area there is a plowed road that stays mostly around kind of that Long Point area but you can get a vehicle and even some wheelhouses out there as well. As we travel south and east over to what I call the east side of the lake you come across Zippo Bay which typically has good plowed road systems and as you keep moving south and east you have Morris Point which also has plowed roads. And then you get over to the Four Mile Bay area which I'm not quite as familiar with but it definitely has a lot of resorts and has some of the most extensive network of plowed roads on the lake. Then as you travel to what I call the north side of the lake you get up to the northwest angle. In order to get up to the angle you need to either snowmobile up on some of the many trails, drive through Canada, or you can fly in as well. When you do get up there there's some resorts on some of the islands as well as out of Young's Bay which also has some plowed roads once you get up there. So there's kind of a basic overview of some of the different areas on Lake of the Woods. We're gonna get back to some fish catching here and then I'm gonna get back to talking about some of the typical patterns that I see throughout the winter and then leave you with some tips and tricks to help you catch more fish. Come in. You can come in this door right here. I'm I've got a spot. No, you're good. You can use that one if you want. Oh my goodness, that's a big fish. Oh my goodness. Okay, it's not that big, but it's definitely bigger than some of these other ones. It bit it. There we go. That's a decent one. I hope it's not a pike. Nothing fancy. A little pike. Well, I guess I can introduce you, huh? Well, my buddy Grant came over to come have some lunch with me. Um, so, YouTube World, introduce you to Grant Larson. Him and his wife own Loon's Nest Resort in Park Rapids. So if you're looking for a great place to come and vacation, check out Loon's Nest. What's your website? Loon's Nest.com. 
loonsnest.com. Yep. And he said if I did a plug for Loon's Nest that he is paying for this whole trip. So, there you go. got my trip paid for. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yep. Oh, <laughs> oh, I got you on the wrong hand. Jeez, guy comes into my house for five minutes and catches a fish. Maybe 12 inches. There we go. Not bad to be cooking brats and catching fish. I know, I saw, I saw it happening too. I went up, I thought about that right as you were setting the hook. I'm like, I went to look at your hand and you were like. Not there. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yep. That is so weird. It's reeling with the wrong hand. Yep. Well, at least you have an excuse if you miss a fish. Yeah, that thing totally bypassed me and went right to you. Oh, never mind. Another one. Double up, double up. Come on. Yep. Oh no! And I missed it. Another little, little guy. Well, you know what they say. Just gotta bring out the food. Fish start biting. In multiple videos, it's been where I've been stuffing my face and a fish comes in. So hopefully, oh, I almost just shoved a big bite in my mouth. And I was like, nope, don't do that. Not when a fish is coming in. Oh, there you go. I want him to hit it on the drop. That's so fun. There he is. Decent fish. <laughs> I gave him the whammy on that. Oh, you bet. Just got that jig and wrap right up in there. Oh, I love catching fish on jig and wraps. It makes me feel like summer. Oof, look at that guy's fin. That guy's all sorts of whacked up. I almost had another instance where I was shoving my face, but I've learned. There we go, one more quick look. Oh, that fin on that thing is just wicked. Look at that. As you saw, I just switched over to that jig and wrap. Um, it was pretty good action, and I wanted to be able to get up and down quickly and not have to mess around with bait. So I switched over to this jig and wrap, and like I said earlier, not only that, but I just absolutely love catching fish on jig and wraps, especially in the summertime. Um, but it still is a lot of fun in the wintertime, and being able to watch them kind of dart around like that there's just not much better. You can edit me right out. No, no, I gotta get my trip paid for. <laughs> Hopefully Amber doesn't watch this one. Brought, hot! Woo! That was the part that was sitting in the snow. How is that still hot? I'm not gonna put that in, I don't think. But I might have to show this, that one. All right, so Lake of the Woods typically follows some similar patterns throughout the winter. And this pattern has changed over the last 10 years and is continuing to change with more fishing pressure. But what I typically see in the early winter is fish being a little bit shallower, often in that kind of 20 to 25 foot range, depending on the area that you're fishing. I also see fish early in the winter on and around some of that mid lake structure. As the winter moves on and those fish get more pressured, you see some of them start to disperse to some of the deeper flats during that mid winter time. This is where it gets to be a little bit more dangerous time of year for the fish because many of the fish are out in that 30 to 35 foot range. Now I'm not here to tell anybody what to do. You can fish wherever you want, but all I know is that a lot of those fish that are being pulled out of that deep water simply are not surviving. I may have some people that aren't very happy with me for those last comments, but hey, that's the fact of the matter. Anyways, you can still find fish on structure during that midwinter time of year as well. And that is actually where we were fishing in this series of videos, but it definitely seems to be a much more hit or miss bite. When the fish are on the structure, they do tend to be more aggressive. When I was growing up, we could actually find fish and catch fish on structure pretty much all winter long. But as they got more pressured throughout the years, it seems as though that structure bite is much more sporadic. Then once you move closer to the spring, the fish start to move back to that shallower water again, towards some of that structure as well as they prepare for spawn. This is definitely true, especially around that Rainy River and Four Mile Bay area. In fact, you can have some very good days fishing for quality fish in the spring in that 10 to 20 feet of water, especially in the early morning and late evening on some of those shallower flats. If you want some more details on how I catch fish on structure during the winter, make sure to check out part one of this series and I will have that link in the description below. But we're gonna get back to the action here and then I'm gonna leave you with some of my top tips to catch more fish while you're up fishing Lake of the Woods. Oh, that one's... Oh, hold on, I got a lot going on here. I better let you go. <laughs> I pulled the rod holder out. I pulled everything out. I was talking on the phone with my dad, trying to figure out what we're gonna do when we're heading in, all of that kind of stuff. Another ear sized fish, lots of fun. He came up and charged it and I felt him bite. It was like an up bite, like that. There he stuck him. Decent fish again. Probably, uh, maybe not as big as I was thinking. Either that or he's swimming up with it. Another nice fish. Man, these things have just been tense when they come up. We'll get that guy right back down. 
since we're not doing any keeping. Yeah. Oh, now he's biting the other one. All right, I just caught him here. We'll see ya. He got all flared out on me. There we go. Decent. Oh, there's a second one down there. Another good one. These aren't giants, but like I said, they are all just quality eater fish. When you can get them to chase a jig and wrap, oh, that's just too much fun. Jeez, he's racing. Slowly let it down. He was wanting to drop. So I'm just going to keep letting it drop. Very bit. I think. Yep, there he is. <laughs> just came racing in as it was dropping. Not big. Looks like a sauger. Off, out. And there we go. Oh. Started after it. He's going to come up and get it. Up it. Yep. There we go. Sweet. I was changing some settings on the camera, so I forgot to press record again, so I missed it, the last couple fish because it's been a pretty good little flurry here. Luckily, they weren't anything too big. You know you've been spoiled when you're not bummed about not pressing record on a couple fish. One more quick look. Another nice eater sized fish. And back down. Up bite, yep. They've been up biting these. I think I just had to change the battery in my mic and almost didn't have time to press record. Ouch, 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 ouch. Another good fish on the jig and wrap. Yeah, when they've been biting these jig and wraps, they have been up biting it big time. So the line just goes slack. Jeez, they've been loving this jig and wrap, not even just ripping. Oh, there he is. Oh man, just chasing this jig and wrap up. Every once in a while you'll get on a bite like that where they are willing to chase that jig and wrap up even when you're not ripping it around. Ooh, there's a good fish. Ooh, he loves to chase. Ooh, I'm not to be ready. Oh, try to rip it around a little bit more. He wanted the aggressive approach. Ooh, now he wants a dead stick. There he is, yep. <laughs> Not as big as it looked right away, but still a pretty quality fish. Nope, not nearly as big as I was thinking. Whoa, okay, has all sorts of water in his mouth. There we go, sweet. Came back as I was dropping. Just came and hit it on the drop. Ooh, another one down there. Oh, these are all a little bit on the smaller side but right around eater size another one right around that 14 15 inch range all right so the first tip that i'm going to give you is to make sure that you vary your presentations i'm just as guilty as anyone else of sticking to your tried and true for too long and then missing out on turning some of those lookers into biters i almost always have a finesse presentation like a dead stick paired with a more aggressive presentation such as a spoon or a rattle bait if you're looking for a little more in-depth look at some of my top presentations that I use for Lake Louise, make sure you check out part two in this series. And again, I'll throw that link in the description below. The next tip that I'm gonna talk about is to match the movement. Make sure you're paying close attention to your electronics in order to tell the mood of the fish. There are times when the fish are lethargic and kind of just want a dead stick laying on the bottom. And then there are other times where they're in a mood where they want only an aggressive style of bait, like a jig and wrap or a rattle bait. These moods can change quickly throughout the day, so make sure you're paying close attention to how the fish are acting and reacting to your baits. Well, I hope you found value in this video. If you did, I would love it if you would subscribe and show your support. It allows me to keep putting out content like this. I'm off to my lake trout fishing trip this weekend. Super pumped for that one. I'm planning on doing some filming while I'm up there, so make sure you stay tuned for that one, and thanks again.